At long last, we're finally here. The series meant to celebrate the franchise's 15th anniversary is finally getting its time on this show. With the final movie, Future, coming out in the next few months, I figure now is the best time to cover these movies since it will take me a while to get through these five. Originally announced at the 15th anniversary event back in 2014, Digimon Adventure Try, as it was called, is a six movie series that takes place after the first two Digimon Adventure series, but before the epilogue of the Zero Two series. Yes, folks, we have a mint quill on our hands, but hey. I'm optimistic. After all, one of the biggest issues with the Zero Two epilogue is that a lot of the characters' features didn't match up with other personalities and goals in the show, so maybe Tri will answer some of those questions and provide the answers the series itself couldn't. Speaking of series though, Tri was originally announced as an anime series, but around 2015 or so, it was announced that it would be six movies, and the reason for why it was six movies was never given. But most people weren't pissed over the fact that Tri would be half the length of a full-length Digimon series that's usually 50 episodes. Instead, they were pissed off over the art style for the faces. But I'll get to that in the animation section. Finally, I want to make this clear. While I may have seen Digimon as a kid, I am not a diehard fan of it or a blind of my nostalgia for the first two series. Not to say that I hate it, just saying that if my opinions don't match up with other Digimon fans who've watched Tri, that's Probably because I'm more of a casual fan of it, okay? Okay, let's begin with the first film, Reunion. Our film begins with a cast of Zero Two, say for TK and Kari, basically getting killed off slash beaten by this random creature who is only revealed to be Alpha Mon in the last 15 or so minutes of the film. Why were they basically killed off slash beaten? Your guess is as good as mine, because one of the failings of the Tri-Series, just to get this out of the way, is that the disappearing Zero Two cast plot point is never really brought up again, say for Ken, but we'll get to that in the second movie. And no one seems to care except for the government agents. Not even TK or Kari give much of a shit about what happened to the Zero Two cast, and yet for a majority of that series, the two are pretty much allies with them. What the fuck? To use another example, this would be the equivalent of in, say, Power Rangers, the original Mighty Morphin Rangers were killed off or beaten, and Tommy and the Replacement Rangers just shrugged it off. I get that Zero Two wasn't that well received by the community, specifically because of its ending, but if you wanted to focus on the original cast, there had to have been a better way than just defeating the Zero Two cast and basically write them out of existence for the rest of the movie series. Actually, an argument could be made, why the fuck are they even here in the first place? You, you could have easily just focused on the Zero One cast and then just awkwardly say they were in another fucking region or something. Would you believe me if I said this was the least of the story problems in the Tri-Series? Yeah, it gets worse. So as said previously, Alphamon fucks off for the rest of the movie until the last 15 minutes or so, so the rest of that time is dedicated to reintroducing the Zero One cast three years after the final battle of Zero Two and showcasing their struggles as teenagers nearing adulthood. Such as the group not being able to hang out with each other anymore, trying to find their future careers, trying to find a way to make two friends happy, etc. But as the film goes on, we also find out that infected Digimon have been appearing in the real world as well as the government's getting involved in these attacks now, so the gang has to come together again in order to stop these infected Digimon and save the world. Oh, and also say this new character may enter Digimon Mekumon from Alphamon near the end of this movie, but frankly I was more interested in the fight than these two characters, so yeah. And if you think that these two are minor characters who will fuck off by the end of the movie, nope, they're Digidestined. And they try and paint it as something new and shocking, but Zero to showcase that they were Digidestined around the world. And this is a sequel to that kinda undermines the intent is what I'm getting at. Really, what should have happened is, oh, you're a Digidestin too? Oh, join the club. There's like 200 other ones. So, yeah, now there are nine Digidestin in this movie series. Yeah, I sure hope that the rest of the series gives these guys an equal amount of time for character development and not waste their time in or have character overshadow someone else's development, because that would be stupid! Speaking of characters, though, fuck Alphamon. He's got no personality, his reason for even being there isn't explored into the later movies, and even then that's a fucking stretch, just like the whole him potentially being the reason for the Zero Two cast getting killed. And all he has going for him is that he's strong. Great, you made a bland uber strong villain that makes Malamayotismon, not his previous one, talking to Mega, more of an interesting villain by comparison. Yeah, can you tell I hate these kinds of antagonists? Also, Mekumon is not that interesting either, she just serves as an object that needs to be rescued in this movie, so let's just move on to the real Digidestin. Ty and Matt's character arcs are basically about them proving if they are worthy of their crests, even if the movie doesn't outright state it. Ty is basically as about being the leader of the group because of the destruction in the early parts of the movie haunting him and not wanting to cause more destruction, while Matt is getting pissy at Ty over the reasoning since not taking action will result in more destruction, and while he is right, 
it's not exactly a good thing to do to your friend, so by the end of the movie, they basically showcase they are pretty much worthy of the crests, and that's it. Or at least I fucking hope so, because it sure would be stupid to keep relying on this fucking character element and not do anything with it. Oh, fuck off, movie. Are, are you freaking kidding me? Basically, their character arc is something the two already went through in the original series, but now they're older. And since they were pretty much the main focus for the movie, I'll quickly go over the others since they aren't given as much focus in comparison. Is this a pretty good character, and like his chemistry with Mimi and TK, as well as Tentamon. Sora is flat, same with Kari, a trend that sadly becomes recurring for the two throughout this run. TK is not that interesting, Joe is also pretty flat, though that could be because he's not in much of the movie. And Mimi was pretty decent. She had her good moments like the ones I'm showing here, but aside from her chemistry with Izzy and the lighthearted nature she brought to the film, that was really about it for her character in this movie. As for the government characters... Fuck him! I didn't find Daiko that interesting of a character in terms of actions or personality, and Maki is such a non-entity in this movie, I almost forgot she was even in it. Let's just move on to the next section. Now I can finally address the animation of the movie. So like I said earlier, people got angry over the changes to the faces of the characters since it didn't match up with the style from the original series. So what do I think of it? I honestly don't have an issue with the faces. Really, all they did was just make the pupils smaller. But apparently this got so bad when Tri was originally announced that people went so far as to make fan edits to the original Tri poster over, yet again, the eyes being smaller. I'm sorry, but that's fucking dumb. It really isn't a big deal, guys. It's a small fucking feature. So how is the rest of the animation? Ugh. It varies. It was done by Toei Animation, who's notorious for having inconsistent animation quality regardless of if it's film or television. Basically, if you couldn't tell from my wording, the animation for Toei is not consistent, and this is no exception. The animation wants to look good, it does succeed in that department, but when it goes off model or looks bad, it really shows. Now even their CGI is subpar, it looks like late PS2, early PS3 graphics, and may I remind you, this came out around 2015. So yeah, the animation quality is inconsistent, but that kind of comes to the territory with Toei's animation department. As such, I can't really say if the animation is good or bad, because there's a lot of instances in this film where both occur. Let's just wrap this up with audio. On the Japanese side, I like that they remade the intro from the original Digimon Adventure for a modern audience. It honestly sounds really good, while the background music and voice work is also pretty good, I'd say. As for the English dub, it's... uh... It's not downright shit. Hear me out. I appreciate that they kept in the original soundtrack for the dub and not insert their own score like Pokemon I Choose You did, but they did swap out the intro music with a remix of the original dub theme and ugh, that fucking synth or whatever that fucking thing is called that made those distortions in the song. I'm sorry, but it grates in my ears the more I listen to it. And somehow it's even worse than the repetitive intro that we got for the original series. And it's not even because I wanted to hear Butterfly or a cover of it. I get why they stuck with a remix of the original dub theme. I just wish that it sounded better. I guarantee you that if I were to look really hard, I could find fucking fan remixes that sounded better than this. And since YouTube's copyright is, well, fucking shit, this is yet another case where I have to recommend you look it up for yourself if you don't believe me, because I don't want to risk this video getting flagged or taken down because I used a small snippet of audio from the source. But I digress. How is the voice acting? Well, it, it's fine. The returning VAs are on par with their original roles in the show, and the new VAs do a good job with the characters they portray, except for one in my case. Maki's voice actress, Shirami Lei, sounds like she's reading directly off the script. Admittedly, just like with other veteran Digimon VAs, that could be the fault of a bad voice director, because I know Shirami Lei is a good voice actress, a fairy tale and solar or anything to go by, but it's still an issue in this movie, and I do hope that improves as this marathon goes on. But, yeah, when looking at the two, I would say that the Japanese version has a better audio overall, but the dub is not too shabby. Far from it. So overall, Reunion is a decent introduction to the Tri-Series, but it could have been a lot better in regards to its character and story. But hey, maybe the next movie will improve on these elements. And we'll find out if it does next time when I review the next film in the Digimon Adventure Tri-Series, Decision. See you then.